Nibiru, the crafts Nibiru. There were thousands of Nibiru, different sized Nibiru. The word Nibiru comes from the word Nabara, which merely means to elevate, to go upwards, and to send downwards. You follow? This one craft that you're talking about, they crashed into this planet, Ta, Tawaka, or, Te or Tiamat, called the Beryl, which is one cube-shaped craft that when in motion creates an orb. The bomb time, which is similar to male and female, by the way, in nature. It crashed here, and y'all are based on that. The commanding officer of that craft was Murta. You understand? But the intellect, the high priest, or the Sam, or the mastermind, the most high, was called Anu. Anu had two sons who were in conflict with each other. And he knew that this was a very dangerous expedition, so he said, I'm taking the son of the disagreeable one who had become agreeable and make him the commander so he can make proper decisions. Enlil would have been too passive and Inki would have been too aggressive. So he took the reptilian seed because Inki's wife who gave birth to Murdoch and them were reptilians and sent him to a planet where reptilians ruled because Genesis tells you that this planet was covered under water and it was dark so he could not send a mammal, he would have drowned. So when the craft came in and the bear was stopped outside of the solar system and sent in giants that came in here, they hovered. Then they brought in what they, they call crystal cities. But they brought them in and they were like small cities and they lived there while they started the experiment. And then they went on to Mars and, and the moon. This is now, now years ago when I said that people said crazy. Now that they found life on Mars, now they found that there's life on stations on the dark side of the moon, it ain't funny no more. There's a great possibility that what I'm saying might be truer than what the hell they're saying. They gotta make me crazy because none of this is in the Bible. And the only way they can keep me and you passive is by keeping us believing that some God called Jesus is gonna come get us one day. And this keeps me and you from turning around and kicking him for all the stuff he didn't did to us. So you gotta keep me and you in that state of mind where we always go, okay, Lord Jesus. Jesus gonna come, he's gonna come every Christmas is coming, he ain't got here yet. <laughs> From 2000, yeah. and that's the very, now he's getting to the point where you're starting to say, we done had 2,000 um, Easter's and I ain't seen no Jesus yet. You better come up with some Jesus real quick so he starts start, he'll be fabricating Jesus's any day now. You understand? So he creates scenarios like David Koresh to, and beat him up to, and that re, regenerates your belief in Jesus. Or they have a bunch of Tamils come on television and say, I had this thing, I was, so when Jesus touched my life and you start really believing it, so it's a, it's a recharging because you become into conscious. You're wise enough to ask questions that they cannot deal with. And new is a man. You follow? I saw him myself in flesh. What you're, what you're caught up with is time lapse. And here's what I get caught up on with time lapse and people who were born in this country and were once Christians. They don't have any problem with the part of the Bible that says that, that Elijah came to Jesus and met him on a mountain. And Jesus did a transfiguration. They say, now this man Elijah and this man Moses was dead for thousands of years. Right in their Bible it says that they came back and met Jesus and talked to Jesus less than 2,000 years ago. You hear me? And the disciples watched it. And then when they finished, Jesus was all full of light, transfiguration. Then they took off and went out. How old was Moses when he was standing in front of Jesus? How old? He would have had to be at least 4,000 years old. And, and Elijah, who went up on a golden chariot, almost 8,000 years old. But Jesus saw them as they were. Why? Because there's a such thing as time leaping. Time regenerating. See, they're reanimating tissues again. That means they've mastered time and age and death. They admitted that death is an illness that there's a cure for. They already admitted that people die of a cardiac arrest and they can cure it. Because now they have, if you take an aspirin a day, you prolong your life. It's a known fact. If you take a bare aspirin every night, right, you will, you will, you will have to worry, you won't have to worry about a heart attack, even if it's in your family. That simple? How did it come out? What's an aspirin? Mold. What's mold? The original source of life. All they did is went back to the original soft of life, all that cutting up and chewing didn't mean a thing. Take an aspirin, which is for mold, which is, which is a self-grown life form, which is what I told y'all a couple of weeks ago. I said, if you want to create life, all you got to do is take a bag and stick a piece of bread in it that's been dead 
all life out of it. You can burn it, stick it in there, and put some water in it, and twist it, and, hold, and leave it there for a couple of weeks, and mold will grow. Therefore, you created life where there was no life. That's what happened on this planet. The right conditions between hydrogen and carbon and oxygen, the right conditions within the 99 elements and sunlight and the sunlight produced the life on this planet which started an evolution in the water but when the beings came here they had to go beneath the water and that's why i was explaining to y'all about genesis when you listen to the story of genesis whoever's talking is talking from beneath the water because it says the spirit of god moved upon the surface of the water Nothing no one could see and everything was deep water then whoever was recording this had to be under the water looking up at the crafts of god her hovering her hovering over the water now in order for these beings to be writing recording and being in the water they had to be in a marina craft some type of craft that can go underwater and create a, a, a sphere for living or they were reptilians and then the bible genesis chapter 3 verse 1 calls him the hosh and says he's a serpent speaks about a reptilian man and they call him the deathan the serpent and serpents or reptilians are aquatic and live under water. Then you go back to all the other cultures in the world. And everything was deep water. Then whoever was recording this had to be under the water looking up at the crafts of God her hovering, her hovering over the water. Now, in order for these beings to be writing, recording, and being under water, they had to be in a marina craft. Some type of craft that can go underwater and create a, a, a sphere for living, or they were reptilians. And then the Bible, Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, calls him the Hosh and says he's a serpent. Speaks about a reptilian man. And they call him the Deathan, the serpent. And serpents or reptilians are aquatic and live under water. Then you go back to all the other cultures in the world. This is what I'm talking about where Jesus and them may record it. If you go back to Samaria, you found Dagon. You go back to find Onam in the most Native Americans. Who is it? The fish man. We have mermaids and mermaids that they've got the bodies of, but they tell you it's a myth. There are people on the planet now that still grow scales. They got a name for the disease. There are people that grow full webs. They have a name for the disease. There are people that are born underwater and can breathe. They got a name for it. It becomes a dis-ease or disease rather than a confession that man is linked to reptilians, that man is breathing water, that man once had gills, that man lived inside of a sack, which is actually an egg called a, 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 a what they call it, the pouch in the woman's embryonic fluid. They lived in an egg. In there, you were, you lived in an egg like a snake in your mother. Now, when that eggshell broke, called a water sack, you came out, and that's when your body transformed like a metamorphosis of a caterpillar to a butterfly to become what you are now. But still, today, you're breathing water. And if you don't have water in your environment, you dehydrate and you die. You know, so you're not the kind of lizard that can live in the desert. You're the kind of lizard that has to be near water. You know what I'm saying? You may not like it. And your descendants were a composite of Enlil and Iki. And they have the same thing in Egyptology. Ra comes out of the primordial egg, out of the water, out of the chaotic waters. Right? So now, if you go back to Egypt, you want to be an Egyptian, you're going to be admitting that you have something to do with beings that were called fishmen. If you go back to Samaria, you're going to have to admit that you're going to go back to, if you go back to Nubia, you're going to, if you go back to the Yoruba, Ogun, you're going to be back, if you go back to Voodoo, you have sea gods. That you had a relationship with beings that came out of the sea, that gave you these webs between your fingers, and like I said many times, if it wasn't for a simple word called grooming, and you saw what you really looked like without shaving, washing, or cutting nails, and all the stuff, you'd be a grossed out creature that would skip every person. <laughs> you never cut your toenails or nails or washed up a field or never shaved.
nigga what you look like. Never combed your hair. Never brushed your teeth. You follow that? And every day when you get up, in order for you to rejuvenate yourself, you dive in the water. They call the source of your reproduction semen. Semen. You can say, that's not the same word, Doc. Yes, it is. It's just that when the Caucasian plays the phonetic game with you, it's all right. It's all right for them to say you farm. That was you farm. Say UFO. Oh, they, they see. Instead of them saying UFO, because UFO is a confession that I really don't know what I'm looking at, and it makes me look stupid. What they do is turn it to a noun and say UFO. Never new organization. Now, none of them want to be UFO researchers now. Now they're UFO researchers. Now that's a phonetic alteration. It's cool when he does it. It's cool when a Freemason take a three let three words from or three parts of a word out of the Bible and put them together and say Jebelun. Goma, Uz, and Dama, wisdom, strength, and beauty, and they say it means God, then it's okay. But when I do it, you say, see how you like to play with words? When I say manifestation, or man is the most infested, the most infestation the planet's ever had, that's not just a perverted word, that's also a damn reality. Man is infesting the planet, ripping up the soil, poisoning the water, eating the animals, and now poisoning and giving himself deadly diseases. Manifestation. Those are realities. You might not like the way they sound, but they're realities. If you don't want to believe what I'm saying, please, and please don't, just go investigate it. Why? Why won't you? Because you're too lazy or you're too afraid to find the truth. You don't want to go and find out that your whole Christianity was full. There's a 2,000 year spell. Now we walk around saying, why we ain't got nothing? Because nobody else who has anything had Christianity. Say, well, the Chinese are doing good, they were Buddhists. The Japanese, they were Buddhists. And the gods that they worship look like, them. Say, well, some Christians make it there. Yeah, white Christians make it. Because the God they're looking at. And as long as you got a God that looks like other than you, you cannot instill dignity, pride, and honor, and nobility, and greatness in yourself or your kind. And we will never get nowhere. We will always be saying, how come we don't got nothing? Yes, there you that again. Oh, he got you finish, finish. I just want to know is um, Silent Arena. Say that again. Sal, am, am I pronouncing right? Silent Arena? Sal and Arena. So, yeah, for soul, for the word solar comes from. Is that absolute when TMF together? No. That's, so this, this, you're dealing with you're dealing with um, different explosions. That's why when, in the book I said not the Big Bang, a Big Bang. There's a concession of Big Bangs when it collapses. See, you know, first it explodes out, then it collapses. And then as it explodes again, pieces break off and each one of these things collapse and explode. So you have, you have triads of, of deities, which were names. They were just, they were ruled, Saul and Arena ruled that, that was, that's why I said there was, um, Om was a planet, a part of a planet that was inhabitable. It wasn't a sun at the time, it was a planet. Just like this planet, when it catches on fire, and as it begins to consume itself, what will it become? A sun. You follow? And then they'll say the planet Earth, where Earthlings once lived. But I'm saying, but when they see it, they'll see a massive ball until it burns out. Well, the time it takes to burn out is making this big decision. Because when you look up at our sun, we're looking at it as being around for a long time. But when you base it on the fact that there are other suns a thousand times bigger than it, this is a very short time y'all got to be here. And it is burning out. And it will eventually be gone. They say in a million years, so that don't mean much to you as an individual. But if the world did exist for a million years, people would wait at that million year, the sun goes boom, they'd be like, oh. <laughs> and that happened before. That's why the Bible keeps saying replenish. Replenish. That's why they want a selected few. They don't want anybody saying 144,000 is not a lot of people. No, they're not. But if you look around this room, there's a bunch of different genes in this room. They are selecting a certain amount of people to take out of here, to take the crafts. The rest of the people here are going to catch hell unless they've learned to transform themselves. You know what I'm saying? Other than that, they can forget. Unless they become spirit beings where they can re-inherit bodies, they can forget it because physical is going to be gone. You follow that? And those other beings are going to come back once this planet has, was, has, has been replenished and they're going to reseed the earth. This is, a, this is a reoccurring event. And it's done because man is becoming more and more God. 
until man is worthy to go back, until you're worthy to go back to Cyrus and eventually risk. Because the first stop out of risk was Sipto. And that was still in the 19th galaxy, which is Sirius Star and connects into this one called Sahu or Sept. Sahu is Orion, sorry. Called Sept in Egyptian. It was still twisted in this one. Then they left there. Today is March 